You have been doing some really cool stuff the last few years. Oh. Have you been able to like sort of take a step back and be like, oh my God, like look what I'm doing? Um, no, this is it. It takes someone telling me uh, that. Someone had said that, uh, someone's like, yeah, hey, you just did After Party and Sonic and this. And I was like, yeah, I guess those are very different. That's so exciting. Uh, but it takes someone to, I'm getting better as I get older too. I'm always worried about what's next and I very rarely uh, take the time, but I've been ve way better at when something happens to be like, oh, I'm really happy. I'm really proud of it. I was really proud of the after party and I took my moment with that or like Sonic 2 doing so well was like, how exciting is that? So like uh, with this, I'm so excited to do something totally different. Like when you and I are talking, it's rarely about something this gory or you know me doing fight scenes or me wielding guns and trying to kill people. So for me, um, this is very exciting, Steve. You have tattoos and stuff. You have a different look in this I movie. I do. And personally. And slick back hair. Oh, 100%. And if I had that ta those tattoos and that outfit, I would absolutely, and looking like you without that stuff, I would absolutely want to leave set and just go out with it. And I did. And that's what I want to know. What was, how did you get treated when you went out with all that stuff? It was so funny. Some people were like, because there's a lot of tattoos. If I wore a short sleeve shirt, you'd see they go all the way up, literally all the way up and around my chest. It was like connected. Christian Tinsley and Corinne put them on. Uh, the gentleman who created the way that we do these tattoos is called Tinsley Transfers. So Christian Tinsley, that gentleman was the person who put them on and created them, which is great. Um, but um, I would wear them on like in the elevator where I'm in the hotel and then going to get food. There's a place like in New Orleans that I went a bunch to get breakfast, the same place every day. And um, you could see that people look at you a little bit different. Some people are like, like this. And then other people are like, oh, very cool. Like some people want to connect with you about the tattoos because they're sleep. It's a choice I'm making. It's not like one little thing that says like hope. It's like, it's like, a, but if they look, if you look close enough at the tattoos, they're all like, Terrible. They're like guns and like werewolves yelling at each other and like drugs and eight balls. And so if you look closely, if people, so from afar, be like, oh, they're like, oh man, what is this guy into? What is he doing? Yeah, a lot of bad life choices. Right. Did you have any input on the tattoos? Yeah. They gave me a bunch of, they gave me a bunch of things. And then I got to like, you know, every now and then I'd be like, oh, what if we did this? Or what if we change this to this? Or if instead of this name, let's have it this name or, you know, stuff like that. So I got to play with that a little bit. Uh, I can't imagine, I know you're a movie fan. And I Huge movie fan. And I can't imagine what it was like your first day on set with Nick. Oh, my God. And it, I really have to— As Dracula. Yes. So it's not even just Nick Cage. It's I'm in front of Nick Cage as Dracula, which is bananas. It's like two worlds, two idols clashing to become one super idol. Super idol would be a good TV show we could probably write, don't you right. think? A hundred percent. I don't know if American Idol will not sue you, right? But there's a chance, right? 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 You we'll know? see. We'll see. Super Idol. It's so different, right? So I, but so I know you're a fan in a cage. What? How many days did it take before you started getting geeky with him, asking them some questions? First day over. Literally first. Same with Jim Carrey. When I met Jim Carrey first day, I asked him about Ace Ventura. It was there was no because I was like, I don't know, I'm never going to be near this person again. So first day, talking to him about stuff and talking about movies and talking about things he likes. I'm always interested in like the people that I'm watching and stuff. I'm always interested in what they're watching um, or like unique experiences. Or we'll just talk about somebody. And I'd be like, oh, right, yeah, that's my close friend for this many years. Like, all oh, right, you've been doing this forever. You know everybody. You've encountered everybody. So it's just, it's great. He's a museum of knowledge. It's amazing. What actually surprised you about working with him in his process on set? Yes, he was so committed. He was so committed and he was there on time every day. Sometimes people that are big stars, they feel like they can play the system a little bit and get there at the last second. He was so prepared, game for anything. When I improvised with him, he was totally down and excited to improvise. He would get himself, when he's supposed to be Dracula and angry, he'd get himself angry right before and then someone would say action, then he'd come into the scene. So it was it was everything I hoped like uh, one of those like Hollywood icons would be. What did you borrow of his costume? Because I know you wouldn't, that's the most important. I, oh man, I didn't get to keep anything costume-wise. My costume was bananas and his costume, like to have that cape, or to have, I mean, he looks incredible. He has so many different looks in this thing. It's amazing. Uh, you got to participate in some of the action. Um, yes. And Did it look believable? Yeah, no, 100%. Great. But you should thank the editor. Right? <laughs> yeah, uh, there couldn't have been me jumping off of a balcony. No, but like, uh, one of the things that I was really surprised at in the movie, and I wasn't sure going in, like how much action there would be, would there be blood? Like, I really didn't know. Yeah. And there is a ton of blood. There's a lot of blood. And I guess it was all done practically. The second person that told me, Kevin McCarthy's like, there's a lot of blood in this. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was all in. I, I love that kind of stuff. Same when it's me. just over the top and it's... Yeah. So what was it like on set? Because people don't realize when you have that much blood, 
and you're doing it practically, when you reset, it takes a while and you oh, gotta- the worst. And also there's scenes where you're coughing up blood all over yourself. Now that's a change of your outfit. Or like the whole, your whole face is bloody, then they gotta reset. Or if it's like getting shot with squibs, you have to do that, then you have to reset everything and put new bullets in, you know, not bullets obviously, but the squibs and new outfits. So for me, not doing action movies ever, this was like a whole new thing for me to learn. Same with like the after party, learning choreography and singing. Like that was all new. So it's so fun to like learn different things and also see like the Michael Jordan of everybody's field. So like Chris Brewster is like one of the best stunt coordinators in the universe. And then, so to work with him and stuff like that, it's really fun to learn. And then I spent a lot of time with that stunt team because I was in New Orleans a lot. So I'd hang out with all the guys and Marvin Ross is in this, who's like, there's just awesome people there. So you're just learning. I just, I love learning about everything because it feels so lucky to be making movies. Doing action is time consuming. Um, is it something that after doing this, you are more excited to do action, or were you like, this was a little more- It would have to be worth it. It would, because you're right, because first of all, it's, I had to get in shape a little bit so I can do the stuff. And then um, I had to learn the choreography. So I'm here like three weeks earlier than I would ever be in a movie to do all the choreography, to learn it, to train and all that stuff. And so um, I would have to, the, the action would have to be worth it. It would have to be cool or the movie would have to be awesome. If it's just like, uh, I was like, oh, it's not worth it. But if it's like so cool, I mean, it was heaven, it was heaven. When you see what it looks like, I really got to do a lot of stuff. I was on wires, I was getting pulled, I was getting punched, I was throwing real punches and stuff like that. So it's like, I loved all of it. But it, you're right, if the movie's like, eh, I'm like, ugh, we don't need to do this. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot of work. And the people who are stuntmen that are really good are like, some men and women obviously, are extraordinary. They're so incredible. It's incredible. Uh, before I run out of time with you, have you started recording on Sonic 3 yet? No, I haven't done anything yet. I, I, I haven't done anything. Have you been told anything about it? No, I hope that I get to do this movie. Right, it comes out next year. I'm confident that- A year uh, and a half, but I hope, I'm, I hope I get to do it. I'm, I'm pretty confident they're not making it without your voice. Okay, that would be nice. You know? That uh, would be great. But I am, the thing that I'm really curious about is Jim has said that he is close to retiring. No, I was, I was uh, doing press with him last time when uh, that came out while we were doing press. Yeah. Um, I hope he doesn't retire because he's, I love Jim Carrey. I think he, I can't imagine a world where we're watching films and Jim Carrey isn't in them, but I understand him and like the idea of him being like, you know what, I've done so much already that maybe, you know, he deserves to do whatever he wants, but um, my comedic heart, I was like, man, it's too fun to see him as Robotnik. So I hope he comes back. I hope we all get to come back. I think that he is, as you said, he should do whatever the hell makes him happy. Right. But the thing I know, because he's talked about it, is he gives so much when he's on set to every role that he does, including, you know, Sonic. Sure. So it's like, I'm so curious, is he going to do it or not? Because he's such a big part. It would be wonderful if in the next couple months we saw an article that said all of us are coming back. That would make me very, very happy. So let's cross our fingers and hope so. Because how fun. Sonic 3 with all these guys and then we have Shadow? Come on. Listen, 100%. Um, I hope he's there. That'd be, that'd be, it would make me sad if Jim Carrey wasn't there. I have to ask, does does uh, Jasper make an appearance in After Party Season 2? This is a great question. I mean, how could he? He's in. He would have to be in jail. But that doesn't stop anybody. I guess, uh, you're right. If I guess if there's a scene, the specific the specifics of the way it would have to happen are so specific that it would be very hard. I'm very excited to see if I'm in the second season. This much is certain. I'm not in it a lot or at all. Right. I, listen, I'm just, I'm, I'm fishing, you know, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just seeing. But listen, I know that you have Die Hard season two. Which, yes, which, and Radio City Music Hall. I'm playing Radio City Music Hall in New York in September, my improv show. And Die Hard is me, Kevin Hart, John Cena, uh, Natalie Manu, and Paula Pell. It's really funny. And that comes out on Roku. It's crazy because right now all my stuff uh, seems to be coming out at the same time. All my stuff, for some reason, everything times out where it's like batches of stuff for us. After Party Space Force and Sonic. And now it's uh, Die Hard, Renfield, and uh, We Lost Our Humans, which was a, 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 a Netflix interactive choose your own adventure thing. But um, Die Hard's really fun. And Kevin Hart's, it's, in, he's like a machine. It's unbelievable. I've never seen one human being do so many things in my entire life and do them at the level that he's able to do them. But the show is really funny. And then uh, Ben Schwartz and Friends, rejectedjokes.com, you can buy tickets there. What is it, like, I don't know if you've played Radio City before, but what does that actually- No improviser has ever played Radio City Music Hall. Supposedly, that's what Radio City told me. I don't know if that's true, but Radio City said I'd be the first ever improv show that's playing that venue. So I want, I really want to know when you're doing something like that and you're playing at a venue that is so historic, iconic, yeah. world famous, 
how much like are you right now, even though it's improv, yeah. how much are you sort of thinking, maybe I need to have a few things in my head? <laughs> no, never. You can't go in with anything. The whole idea is I got this far without anything. Like we just go, we go in there with nothing and we create on the spot. The only thing that it is, is uh, it's, I don't get nervous on tours, but when I played Carnegie Hall, uh, I did the Beacon Theater, which you came to twice, and or and um, Radio City. Radio City, I'll be a little bit nervous beforehand, just because it's so big. It's six thousand people. It's by far the biggest crowd. I've, I've done thirty six hundred, but I'm so it's like excited, but I'm so, I'm just I'm nervous, but I'm so excited. I can't wait to see if it works. Nobody's ever tried a venue that big, so it's like I can't wait to see if it's where I think nobody ever. I don't know the real facts, but. Um, so the, obviously nothing's planned beforehand, but it's bananas when like you go backstage and it's like a hundred dressing rooms for like rockets, but it's just us, me and my three friends in a small room being like, all right, so let's have a good show. And uh, you know what I mean? We're so like bare bones, the whole thing. Um, but I'm really excited. Ben Schwartz and friends were announced, the tour will already be announced by this time this comes out. And then I don't know what I'm gonna speak to you next, which is a bummer. You and I usually speak a lot. Well, you can attend some of my screenings. Right, of course. You know, just throwing that out there. You know? On that note, I'm gonna say congrats on this. Thank I you. really hope it's a huge hit. Thank you, man. I'd love to keep playing bad guys. It was very fun.